So last time we were looking at equivalent fractions, and I think I gave you this example. I said that one half was equivalent to four eighths, which meant that they have the same value, they just have different denominators. Are those two fractions in fact equal? <coughs> sure, yeah, one half and four eighths are the same. One out of two or four out of eight mean the same thing. We're talking about one half. Now here's what I need to show you. How we can get from one fraction to an equivalent form of fraction is this. If I take and multiply both top and bottom of our fraction by the same number, let's say I took one half and I multiply it by four over four. If I multiply that by 4 over 4, or I just think about it this way. If I take and I multiply the top number by 4 and the bottom number by 4, what's the 1 times 4? 4. four. What's the 2 times 4? 8. That's going to give me all the time an equivalent fraction. I can give you another case. Let's take, let's take 3 fifths and we're going to make up an equivalent fraction. Uh, give me some random number. Bigger than two. Seven. Five. Seven. Okay, I like seven. Two people said seven. Oh, that's weird. Two times seven. Let's say seven. If I take and I multiply the top of our fraction by seven and the bottom of our fraction by seven, I'm going to get 21 over 35. Guess what? I can guarantee you that three fifths and 21 over 35 are exactly the same value. I can guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. One half and four eighths are the same value. Because here's what we should know about some fractions. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number, and you will have an equivalent fraction. Why don't you have you with me on that? So as long as I multiply both the top and the bottom of our fraction by the same thing, for example, four over four or seven over seven, I can make an equivalent expression. So we'll have a little note here. Why are you multiplying it by 7? I just made it up. I'm just showing you that whatever number you gave me, if I multiply both the top and the bottom by that number, I'm going to have a fraction that looks different, but that has the same value. Here I chose 4, just because I wanted to show that one. But I, you could give me anything, right? You could give me 5 or 9. If, as long as I multiply both the top and the bottom by that number, I'm going to get something that has the same value. Does that make sense? So we can multiply both the numerator and denominator of our fraction by the same value, and we will get an equivalent expression, or equivalent fraction. If we multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number, or by the same value, we will make an equivalent fraction. show you a couple things to make sure you see what's going on before we continue any further. First thing I want you to see is why this actually works. Why this works. Would it work if I multiplied just the top by a number or just the bottom by a number and forgot the other one? No. For instance, is this the same? Look at the board here. If I didn't multiply the top by four, would that be the same value as one half? No. So why does it work that when I multiply both of them by the same number, it's still equivalent. Why? Say it again. I can. If I, if I reduce this, it'll go back down to one half, right? We haven't talked about reducing, but we will in just a minute. We're getting there. But why is it that I have to have the same number? What about this? Could I do four and five? Would that make an equivalent fraction? Uh, you have to have the same numbers because they're equal. Because they're equal. So they're equivalent. Why? 
Yes, because you're right. They have to be equal because they're equivalent. Why? <laughs> Why? Good. Same numbers on the top and the bottom. What do you have when you have the same number on the top of a fraction and the same number on the bottom of a fraction? One. How much does that equal One. when you have the same number? One. One. Look what you're doing. You're actually multiplying by a fancy one. Do you see that? This number right here, how much is 4 over 4? One. 1. 1. What's 1 half times 1? What's anything? Okay, what's anything one times 1? Uh, that gives you back your, yourself. Yeah, yeah. You times 1 are you, okay? This fraction times 1 half is that fraction. So 1 half times 1 gives you that 1 half. That means this is the same. <coughs> Look what you're doing. What's 7 over 7? One. One. You're multiplying by 1. You're really just multiplying by 1. It's not, it's changing the look of it, sure. It's changing the look of it. It looks different. But because you're multiplying by 1, to get that, the value is inherently the same. Raise your hand if you understand that. The values are the same because you're multiplying by 1. Now, this was all fine and good. Do you understand how to get from one fraction to another? How oh, we can do that? We, if, I, if I multiply by any number, it's just going to give me an equivalent expression. What we're going to be doing is going the other way. So instead of starting with a simplified fraction, we're going to start with this one and trying to break it up. That's why I showed you this way, because we're going to be going the opposite way in just a moment. So instead of me just making up a number like 7 or 4, we're going to be looking for a common number in both 21 and 35. We're going to be looking for a common number in both 4 and 8. That common number is called a factor or a common factor. We're going to be looking for something called the greatest common factor to simplify those fractions. So we're gonna, you're going to see this in a moment. We're going to be going the reverse way of this. So let's begin talking about how to simplify fractions. Firstly, what does it mean when fractions are, are simplified? What's that mean? Well, let, let's look up here. Are these, is this fraction simplified? Yes. yes. Is this fraction simplified? No. This one? No. This one? Yes. Okay, why? Is that its lower form? I heard. <laughs> is that its lowest form? Yeah. yeah, we're talking at the same time. That's all right. It's at its lowest point. Okay, that's one way to explain it. What's another way to explain it? It says its lowest form. It says lowest form. What's the lowest form mean? Lowest. Can't. You can't, can't go anymore. Why not? Because there aren't equal parts to break it down anymore. Say that again? There aren't equal parts to break it down anymore. Okay, they're not equal parts to break it down anymore. I'm going to say instead of parts, I'm going to say factors. There's no more factors that are shared. For instance, if you look at 3 and 5, does anything divide 3 that also divides 5 besides 1? Mm -hmm. no. Then you're done. You can't do that anymore. Is there anything that divides 4 and divides 8? Yeah, two. Of course. 2 does. Or think bigger than 2. What's four. You guys have got to be with it today. My class has been asleep today. You have to be with it. Come on. You participate. Get this stuff in your head. What's shared between four? What divides both four and eight? Four. 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 Sure. What divides both 21 and 35? Seven. 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 Seven does. Seven does. That's right. We're looking now for that shared factor. That's how we're going to simplify some fractions. So first thing, fractions are considered simplified when they share no common factors. That's how, they're, they're, how we know. That would be their smallest form. So fractions are simplified when the numerator and denominator have no common factors or shared factors. are simplified when the numerator and denominator have no common factors. That common factors are underlined. What a common factor is, is a number that divides both the top, our numerator, and bottom denominator of our fraction. That's what we're talking about.
so let's look at how we do this. There are two methods. Um, I'll show you the, the one we're going to be mostly using first. We'll do most of our examples like this. But if we ever get across a really hard fraction we don't know how to simplify, I'll show you a different method using our prime factorization to do that. You guys ready? You sure you're ready? Are you ready? Okay, we're going to look at 12 fifteenths. 12 over 15. Is that fraction simplified? No. Here's the idea. Here's how I'm going to model for you how you think of this. You look at both 12 and 15, and we start thinking about numbers that are going to divide 12 and 15. Now, 1 is really not going to help us, because 1 times anything, it, it, it's not going to simplify anything for us. We want to look for things like 2 or greater. So 2 doesn't work. Does 3 divide both of them? Yes. Okay. Does anything bigger than 3 divide both of them? No. no. We want to start with the biggest number. If we, if we start with the smallest numbers, sure, it's going to simplify it, but you might have more steps to do after that. So we're going to start with the biggest number that divides both 12 and 15. In this case, there's, there's only one of them. It's only 3. Here's what you do with that. Once you find out that 3 is going to divide both these numbers, We're going to write this as 3 times something and 3 times something. And you've got to figure out 12 is 3 times what and 15 is 3 times what. The reason why we're looking for that same number, well, I'll show you in a second, the same idea as this over there. 12, instead of 12, I'm going to write 3 times, what do you think? 4. Four. Four. Good. Instead of 15, I can write this as 3 times. Five. Why does that help us? Because my teacher said so. I cross things out now. It's good. Why does it help us? Because it gets to the lowest common factor. I want you to look, yeah, I want you to look opposite. Look, look at, at this as going backwards of this example. Really, we're, we're right here, right? We have something that's not simplified. We just made this step. If we made this step, how do we get from here to here? Here's the whole purpose. I'll show this to you one time, okay? You have to trust me on some of this fraction stuff right now. We'll deal with this in multiplication. The first thing you need to trust me on is that you don't have to show me this every time, okay? I understand that. I'm just showing you once to prove that it's true. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So the one thing you need to trust me on is that any time I have something be multiplied in the numerator and denominator, I can split that up as two different fractions. I've actually showed this to you once before, I believe. This is the same thing as 3 over 3 times 4 over 5. That's the same. You have to trust me for right now, but that is for sure true. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay. How much is 3 over 3? One. 1. Anything divided by itself is 1, right? Yeah. So this gives us 1. What's 1 times anything? Five. 1 times anything is four over anything, five. whatever you have. So 1 times 4 over 5 is? 4 over 5. 1 times 4 over 5 is simply 4 fifths. 1 times it times some number gives you back that number. It's an identity. This means that this is equal to 4 fifths. You can do this every time. It doesn't just have to be 3 over 3. Anytime you have a number over itself, we could split that up of our fraction if it's being multiplied. We can make that equal to a 1. 1 times anything gives you that anything back. The easy way to show that without all this, this work Whenever you have a number over itself and you're being multiplied, please stop and just listen for a second because I have people who do this all the time and it just drives me nuts. You're going to get the wrong answer forever if you keep doing this. This only works for multiplication. Are you getting me here? Only for multiplication. If you have something like this, which I'm sure you've seen it before, uh, but we haven't even covered that in this class, 